News Talk 1430 WXNT, and you've reached the edge of the web with Aaron Sparks. <laughs> We're back with Edge of the Web, uh, brought to you by Site Strategics. You know what? You can always come to us and give us a shout between shows at... 877-SEO for web, uh, otherwise known as 877-736-4932. You can find us at sitestrategics.com or simply just search Indianapolis Search Engine Optimization. Guess what? You find us there too. That's right. I wanted to finish up my my, my discussion with uh, our discussion with uh, the conversions, uh, the CTR rates and conversion rates. I know I'm talking a lot of inside baseball, but it makes very good sense. I want to know how often my ad's getting clicked and how effective my ad is, and that's a, that conversion rate is is a, a target we want to shoot for. And I'll give you a percentage that you want to have a look at. If it's if it's less than one percent. It's a failing ad. You're not getting the type of traction that you want from your audience. So you want to go for a 2% or maybe a 3, 3.5%. And if you can correlate that to some, some metrics in uh, direct mail, you know, 2.5% is a great return on a direct mail campaign. You can do even better based on the type of audience you're going for. You can get higher numbers like 5% if it's a non-competitive industry that's the long tail. Do people even check direct mail anymore? You know what? I throw it away. Yeah, and I check my I check my trash can whenever it comes in. <laughs> 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 no, they're great liners. All right. Um, another goal to go after to finish up what we were just talking about is the conversion rate goals. Every, you know, those are a little bit more. Um, there's a little bit more. Uh, tied to different industries, and you really can't compare one to another. But there are some standards to to hold on to. If you're if you're tracking your conversions, you should be looking at around a two point nine to to six percent conversion rate. Okay, and that's of traffic coming in that eventually lead into a lead, a sale, an email sign up, uh, whatever you're wanting them to do. Right. Right. Now you can track this through AdWords, but you and on top of that, tracking it through Google Analytics gives you a lot more knowledge about the conversion funnel that we talked about. If they come to a landing page and if they have to go through a shopping cart process, there may be a couple pages along the way before they get that receipt page. You can see through Google Analytics where they may be dropping off. So if if you're if you've got some cumbersome type of navigation uh, uh, after they get to that landing page, right? Mm-hmm. If you're hiding the cheese a little bit with uh, with not a very uh, bright graphic or what have you, we'll talk about conversions here in a second. Right. Um, you can lessen your con- your your conversion goal. So those are the kind of things that you need to pay attention to. All right. All right we're going into conversions, getting them to drink. This is the thir- thirsty horse. Segment of the show. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Horses are in the brain, man. Um, SEO or ahead. SEM pages. All right. So obviously we need to be geared towards both of those. And SEO being the organic, right. SEM being the paid. Uh, SEM tied to that distinct click, mm-hmm. having that conversion set in to where we know exactly what phrase they typed in on on Google, mm-hmm. clicked on the ad, what ad they clicked on mm-hmm. to go and make that purchase of the product. Was it the same product they they searched for? Mm-hmm. Was it a different product? Uh, SEO, it's it might not have the exact. Uh, well, it's the same thing. If somebody well, I had a client, uh, Firepoint Creations, to do engraving stuff, right. uh, we ran a CM campaign, but we were wondering we had a purchase totally out of the the, mm-hmm. the frame of the SEM campaign. Right. So we did a look at the SEO on the keywords that they typed in to go purchase that item, and mm-hmm. just kind of compared the two and. Uh, Sure enough, it was uh, an organic search result. He was on the first page of that product. They came in, and they stayed for four minutes, and they bought that product. So Wow. So they actually spent – that's not four, four minutes on one page. It's four minutes as they're interacting with yeah, several different pages. Yeah, seven pages, I believe. But they did add to cart whenever they hit the page that they were looking for for that particular product. Mm-hmm. So – it's important to know that the home page is not where all the traffic comes through. When it's, a, it's kind of a three-dimensional object, the websites are. And based on how the search engine find different pages, they'll send traffic straight to those pages. And you can even craft and guide users to different areas of their website. But you have to think about this. This is the first time they're interacting with your website. And it's it's not nearly as pretty as the home page mm-hmm. with all the bells and whistles. Maybe coming in sight along into a page that – won't be as uh, highly converting. It won't. You need to think about if somebody's seeing that for the first time. How do you want to enhance their experience? If if they're coming in, 
asking certain questions, do you stop them at the door and not, not – giving them additional information about what they're asking for. Right. So part of that is content, but a lot of it has to do with uh, uh, graphics and and the design of the site. Yeah, you talked about the six-foot uh, rule, right. which was a great one. You know, mm-hmm. you print print that, that page off on a sheet of paper, put it six foot away, and then see what pops out. Right. Hopefully your call to action pops out. That's right. And then we talk about the call to action. The call to action is whatever you want them to do. Okay, your site, your landing page must be persuasive. This is the first time they're experiencing you. If they don't know what you want to do, they're going to bounce right off that page. So the call to action needs to be above the fold. Now that's an inside term, but it's actually kind of reminiscent of of newspaper uh, terminology. If you're if whatever you want them to do is above the fold, it's no, you're not pushing, you're not. It's not below the screen. The first screen of the of, of what's coming up in the browser is above the fold. Now that all differs based on the resolutions of, of of different screens. But conventionally, if it's not, if your call to action is not in the first four hundred pixels of a of, of a page, that's below the fold, and you're going to lose a lot of that traction, that traffic, because smaller resolution monitors just won't see that that call to action. You need to make that make that call to action look like a button. Looks look like a, a visual trigger to go to the next thing. Don't put you know content is great. You know we all like links on our website, but make this thing as tactile as possible. If I can use that word, that will visually connect the person that's searching on that to that next step. Click here for more information, but click here to find you know, to find out more about this product. What have you? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, we also recommend, rec- recommend emphasizing the benefits, benefits not features. And I want to be very, very clear on this. You're designing this landing page. Now, we're talking uh, – we're really in the mindset of, of both SEM and SEO, but let's, let's just look at uh, a pay-per-click audience. They've searched on a particular product, and they're looking, looking at this page. You need to show the benefits because emotions motivate, motivate us motivate us on how to on, on what to purchase mm-hmm. don't tell me just the specs my logic brain you know will will be be looking at all the specs but tell me how it will benefit my life or my business improve my whatever my x factor sure and that's going to get me to buy more okay you talk about trust enhancers a little bit. Absolutely, trust enhancers. Talking about um, testimonials. Uh, talking about uh, chamber of commerce logos, right. BBBs, that's stuff right. like that. Those those things. Um, Shout out to our local Angie's List. I know we have one client that really promotes that on their front page. That's right. That's right. And and depending on the industry, those need to be there because those are are the sanctioning bodies that give give credibility and accreditation to them. And it's it's the same thing with it, with the pay with a. Uh, a uh, e-commerce website. You need mm-hmm. to have the UPS symbol there. You need to have the PayPal and the and the authorized the the, the, uh, the Visa, Mastercard labels. Those things give confidence as well as the the, the SSL certificate that needs needs to be in place to make sure that they have a secure area that they're going to be transacting with. Yeah, all those things need to be in place. The landing pages must have focus as well. Uh, you need to have continuity between the ad they clicked on and the landing page. We, like we talked about before, an inconsistent message will confuse. And if they're looking for a value-added proposition, the land, landing ad should enforce it. If you're actually putting a value-added proposition on that ad, you better believe you need to reinforce it and build upon that whenever they click on that page. Mm-hmm. Okay. Also, remove some clutter from your website. Um, Unnecessary, unnecessary noise, uh, literally too many bright graphics and excessive bolds on words can really distract that user from what you want them to do. Don't confuse them. Too many options on a page can confuse them as well. Very similar if you send them to the home page. They're having to make additional decisions just to find out what you wanted them to do, and they're going to be gone. So clean out a lot of the, the distractions to make, make it very easy to understand where you want them to go. I don't know. If you ask me, Pinterest is kind of confusing. Oh, but you know what? <laughs> don't get me started. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it serves my ADD very well. Um, we're talking about conversions. Landing pages must be complete. Now, let's check this out. Make sure that your contact methods are tested. A lot of times, these landing pages... <laughs> Something is getting forgotten is is the contact form or something like that needs to be able to function correctly. Yeah, you know? that's very important. In there, make sure that your that your that your phone numbers are there. Um, also, make sure that your landing page is tested 
in different browsers. Mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many times a website look good, looks good in an Internet Explorer browser, but Chrome or Firefox or Safari, for that matter, aren't t- tested. So some of the design functionality is not even there. Now, if, I had to get a shout out to Chrome, though. Usually, it's always Internet Explorer that we yeah, have problems yeah, yeah. with. Well, I was kind of, kind of steering into the skid, but we <laughs> we emphatically do not like Internet Explorer. I'm sorry, especially Internet Explorer eight. That that thing should just be shot in the head. Oh. <laughs> We have to debug so many times a perfectly designed site that, that doesn't come up well in Internet Explorer, and we have to retrofit this stuff. Yeah. But th- there are great tools out there. We're going to talk about a cool tool later on down the road that gives you the ability to test your site on different browsers, different iterations. Uh, all right. You're listening to News Talk, 1430, Edge of the Web Radio. More to come. 